Coming up, an earnings report with a difference. Find out how the first week of legal marijuana sales have gone in Colorado and how to make the most of a winter that's wet even by British standards. More on that in a moment. First, though, after the ECB, before the payrolls, tough talk, but no action from the European Central Bank yesterday and solid gains forecast for U.S. unemployment, uh, a number especially closely watched given it's uh, the first non-farms number, of course, since the Fed started to taper. Let's get straight to Ian Stannard, head of European FX strategy, Morgan Stanley, find out what's going on in the FX markets. Hi there, Ian. Um, Dollar taking a little bit of a breather ahead of these payrolls numbers. What kind of number do we need to see for it to get some steam behind it again? Yeah, I think that overall the dollar is going to be generally better supported as we see stronger data from the U.S. coming through, starting to feed through into uh, higher yields now that we see the, the Fed starting to move away from QE and more towards guidance with regards to its tapering operation. And as we see that working its way back down the curve, more into the belly of the curve, I think that was going to provide some broader support for the dollar. So not just against dollar yen, where traditionally we've seen the biggest reaction to US data, but I think we're going to see a broader support for the dollar. So against the other majors as well, we should see the dollar coming through. So for today's data, I think anything over 200 could well oh, provide okay. could well provide that support. Because I've got to say, our, our guys at IFR are saying 225 would, would then kick in that support for the dollar. But you're saying 200. That's interesting. Um, all right. Let, let's... Let's look at the euro. Um, it's recovered some ground following the, 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 the dovishness from, from Draghi yesterday. Um, what do you expect it to do over the next few months? I think the, the risks are still very much on the downside for the, for the euro. Obviously, the ECB has strengthened that forward guidance. We have seen some adjustment in the rates market on the back of that. So many of the traditional indicators we look at, such as the swap spread differentials and the one-year, the one-year forward rates, have all now started to push lower again, suggesting the euro is going to come back under some pressure. So we are looking for that to start to, to feed through. I think we do need to watch the data, though. It probably is going to be very data dependence. We need to see weaker data coming through, particularly in core Europe. I think that will be the trigger point for the next move lower in the euro. And where is the, what is the next move lower? What's the level you're looking for? I think uh, now we, we need to watch for a move back down into the 133 area. That would be our initial target. Uh, but if we start to break out of that range, then I think we start to open up a much bigger open up the way for a much bigger move lower in euro dollar over the course of the coming year. So we are looking for euro dollar to continue to come under pressure throughout the year. We have a 124 forecast for the end of this year, but I think it's going to be a very gradual move lower rather than a sharp move lower for euro dollar. Is Draghi playing with fire, leaving it, waiting it out this long with, the, with, this, with this apparent deflationary threat? Well, one of the things they have, uh, obviously, now to start to balance is some of the improvement they see coming in the periphery of Europe. We see the stabilisation of peripheral asset markets uh, coming through. So that actually may provide them with some comfort. But I think you're right. I think they now need to start to switch back onto the price stability issues and looking at some of the disinflationary pressure, which is starting to build. And if that starts to come through more clearly in the core of Europe, I think that will be the trigger point for them having to take further action. Um, let's get a quick word on the Canadian dollar. I mean, we've looked at it over the last few days. We're at four-year lows now. I, I know a, a run of pretty, pretty bad numbers, including some PMIs, haven't helped. What's the outlook? I think the uh, Canadian dollar is still vulnerable to some further uh, decline. So uh, a dollar CAD, we are still looking for that to move higher. And again, we could see the Canadian dollar becoming increasingly sensitive to strong U.S. Uh, data, which is a complete change in the currency's behavior. Normally or traditionally, we've seen the Canadian dollar actually drawing some strength from U.S. Uh, positive surprises. But recently, we've seen the Canadian dollar coming under pressure. So a strong non-farm payroll today, again, could push dollar cat higher. All right. Great. Ian, many thanks. British retail sales growth slowed in December, according to figures out this morning. Expansion slowing to 1.8% from 2.3% in November. Of course, this week we've had numbers from retailers including M&S and Sainsbury's. What's becoming clear is despite improving signs for the UK economy, fortunes remain mixed for retailers. Angeline Ong used Starmind to identify which ones have better prospects than others. It's been a tale of two cities for UK retail stocks. Not much cheer for the likes of Tesco, Marks & Spencer and Morrisons, as all three saw sales dropping during the holiday period. 
Rival Sainsbury's has impressed, though, reporting a small rise in sales despite tough market conditions and that terribly stormy weather. In terms of valuations, Starmine shows Sainsbury's is not too expensive either, with a forward P.E. of 10.7 times. That puts it in the same range as Tesco and Morrison's, while M&S is looking expensive with a forward P.E. of 12.6. The real story is when you look at Starmine's arm score. Sainsbury's scores the highest at 65, while Tesco comes in at a dismal 6. The closer the score is to 100, the higher the chance of upward analyst revisions ahead. Given that and Sainsbury's valuations, the retailer looks best positioned to take advantage of the UK recovery when it really hits the high street. Some other retailers reporting their first interim figures. Colorado's marijuana shops reporting sales of over $5 million one week after the state legalized recreational use of the drug. The National Cannabis Industry Association, yep, there is one, says over 100,000 people visited marijuana shops during the week. Many stores say supplies are already running short. That is it for this morning. Let me leave you with our video of one man who's making the most of Britain's rainy winter, wakeboarding the new way to enjoy some country lanes just outside of London. That after flooding caused by days or even weeks, uh, it seems, of rain. I'm Axel Threlfall, this is Reuters.